Antibiotic resistance is commonly described as evidence for evolution. Evolution from a single cell organism to a complex multicellular organism requires three things in molecular genetics. Number one, an increase in information. Number two, such information needs to be meaningful. This is difficult to define, but involves information being more specific and complex. It needs to do something more purposefully and in a more complicated way. Number three, it needs to continually happen. Natural selection, this means that every step needs to be adaptive. Nearly every single mutation needs to be beneficial to the enzyme, protein or organism, so that particular step is transferred to its progeny. Thus, mutations that lead to adaptation are not necessarily proof of evolution, but they also need to satisfy their criteria of specific information gain. The third step is more difficult to prove, continual specific information gain, but I'll avoid that for the time being. We'll start with the first example, Staphylococcus. It's a very common bacteria which causes pneumonia, skin infection, septicemia, etc. It's also known as golden staph. Over the years, Staphylococcus has developed a resistance to many of the common antibiotics used against it. The first example is penicillin. Penicillin resistance is mediated by a penicillinase, which breaks down penicillin. It was determined that the original penicillinase was isolated from the gram-negative E. coli in 1940. This was prior to the clinical use of penicillin. It was transferred to Staphylococcus via a plasmid. It is therefore not a product of gradual evolutionary change to produce information. The information was there prior to the use of penicillin and was merely transferred from one organism to another um, during the period of penicillin use. Methicillin resistance, or flucloxacillin resistance, this was discovered in 1961. This is due to a mutation in the penicillin binding protein within the cell. Penicillin needs to bind to this particular protein in order to kill that bacteria. From an information point of view, this demonstrates a degradation of information. How is that, you ask? Well, the pen penicillin binding protein, by a mutation, lost the ability, therefore lost the information, to bind to penicillin. This demonstrates that a loss of information can lead to benefit in certain circumstances. Staphylococcus can also develop resistance to vancomycin. There's more than one modality. Uh, examples include visa, or intermediate resistance to vancomycin. This involves thickening of the cell wall. The mechanism is unclear at this stage, but involves vancomycin getting stuck in the cell wall. Until the mechanism is fully elucidated, it is difficult to comment on this type of resistance from an information point of view. Vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or VRSA. There are several mechanisms. I'll concentrate on the gene VAN-A. Resistance is conferred via this particular gene. This has been shown to be transferred via plasmid from the organism Enterococcus faecalis. This is therefore not new information, but information borrowed from another source. The question is then, however, how is Van A formed in Enterococcus faecalis? The origin of Van A is not known, however its mechanism of action involves enzymatic change to change the structure of the cell wall so that vancomycin is unable to attach to it. There are a few clues as to the origin. For example, Van A ligase, one of the Van A enzymes, does not have a specific substrate base, but a broad substrate base. This suggests that it was originally an enzyme that would work on a small number of proteins, but has been altered to be able to work on a larger number of proteins. This loss of specificity indicates a loss of specific information at the catalytic site. This remains conjecture at this stage, and not proven. So you ask, how does the loss of specificity indicate a loss of information? Well, if an enzyme can recognise A, B and C at its binding or working or catalytic site, then it will only work on or catalyse proteins with A, B and C on them in the right order. However, if the enzyme degrades and loses the ability to recognise C, it will only recognise A and B, and therefore it will only catalyse proteins with A and B on them. Therefore, that particular enzyme will catalyse or work on more proteins because it has lost information or specificity for the type of proteins it needs to work on. On to the next example, Streptococcus. Streptococcus pyogenes remains sensitive to penicillin despite many years of penicillin use. Streptococcus pneumonia has developed resistance to penicillin. This particular resistance is very similar to that of MRSA. 
that is, a mutation to the penicillin binding protein, causing a loss of information of that penicillin binding protein, so it does not bind penicillin. This stops the ability of penicillin to act. On to particular antibiotics, sulfonamide. Sulfonamide is an old antibiotic of which there are many different organisms that have developed resistance to it. Its action involves interrupting a metabolic pathway, that is folic acid metabolism, and therefore inhibits formation of DNA and other proteins. Specifically, it acts as an inhibitor of the enzyme dihydrofolate synthetase, which normally metabolizes para-aminobenzoic acid, or PABA. One of the main mechanisms of resistance is alteration to the enzyme dihydrofolate synthetase so that its recognition of sulfonamide is reduced. It has been shown that its infinity or its ability to attract PABA does not increase. This therefore demonstrates a degradation or loss of information and not a gain of specificity to the substrate PABA. There are many other antibiotics to which bugs have developed a resistance to by altering their receptors. This includes erythromycin, rifampicin, trimethoprim and quinolone. At worst these examples represent a loss of information mutation or at best uh, neutral information neutral mutations. Another example is chloramphenicol resistance. Chloramphenicol resistance is due to inactivation of the drug from the enzyme called chloramphenicol transacetylate. The origin of this enzyme remains obscure, but unlike penicillinase, as discussed previously being present prior to the use of penicillin, chloramphenicol transacetylate was not isolated before the development of chloramphenicol. Given that its origin is unknown, it's hard to comment on the molecular genetics and whether this represents new information or simply the degradation of some enzyme that was used by the bacteria for other purposes. I hope these examples have demonstrated the inability of antibiotic resistance to confirm evolution. None of the examples discuss um, when the molecular genetics are known demonstrate an increase of information. The third point, continual information gain, is even more difficult to prove. As a real world example, one could use a, a software program that every line or even every letter that is written in the software program needs to increase information and be useful to that program in order for that program to be better. This, as any software programmer knows, is impossible. One needs to write a number of lines so they can add a specific task to the program in either, either for it to be better. It's not going to be achieved with one extra line or a change of one letter. Yes, certainly at times one letter will improve specific information gain for that particular program, but continual information gain from one change at a time, that's impossible. Yeah.